software. So just talking about, you know, what the goal of any particular release in Mastercam is, you know, to make you guys more and gals more efficient and productive with the software. Because, you know, it's a it's a very competitive market these days. And we want to give you the tools that can most help you succeed at, at your particular workplace. So we've put a lot of emphasis on partners with Mastercam. So that comes from like the Miltern machine environments, tool libraries, the machining cloud, and just working with partners. Like last year, we officially became a Mazak VIP partner. We're an Akuma partner. We have partners really with all the major machine tool manufacturers, Haas, really you name it. And then also just getting into the CNC programming side, which we'll we'll talk more about today. And I don't have any particular files on the whole making consolidation, but the short story there is if you're a multi-axis customer, you know, drilling essentially is always two axis. It just depends what angle that drill is coming from. So it has been consolidated just onto the regular drill toolpath window. And if you're licensed for multi-axis, you'll you'll have a drop down for you know what sort of axes control you want to have for that five axis drill and with safety zones and everything you're used to. We'll, we'll get into some files on the chaining dialog boxes that have been updated and just all the enhancements that have been made to chaining in general. And then some enhancements on the dynamic mill. I don't really have an example since this is just a preview webinar and you know trying to keep things short. Some of the accelerated finishing that's in uh, multi-axis software. So a couple of the areas that we're focusing on for the 2020 release is, and we did a lot of this for 2019 as well, but the job prep and setup and basically getting the part ready to get tool pass to it and then getting that part on the machine in the shortest amount of time, you know, that, that print to part time that I always talk about. And we also have some enhancements to the model-based definitions and simulation improvements and then also some different enhancements on the validation side. Basically, you know, the goal always is when you hit that G1 button in Mastercam to generate the code that it's exactly what you want to run on the machine and you're not hacking it up in Simcoe Editor, editing it at the controller, having operators, you know, coming back to you in the programming office saying, what the heck is going on here? So, and then lastly, just managing your job. And I'll get to that in the beginning of the webinar here, you know, managing planes, you know, standardizing files across the shop and really just making as many, many enhancements as, as we can to, you know, as the software matures, basically fine tuning all these little things that you're you know, used to, you know, maybe doing a workaround or, you know, you've just gotten used to the way the procedure is and, you know, it's six clicks. How do we make that two clicks and just making it more efficient? You know, ever since we hired Russ, who's the UX product manager, which is, you know, the interface of the software, we've we've seen a lot of enhancements. You know, if I, I go back now and use really even any of the X versions, I I kind of struggle with how all that works. So let's start getting into the files here. So the first thing I want to talk about here is some enhancements we've done with planes and plane management. So I have just a sample part here. You know, it's it's sitting here in a vise. It's a aerospace latch. If any of you were at IMTS, we were cutting this on a in a miniature form on a one of those pocket NC machines. But essentially what we've done here is we've expanded the capabilities of how planes are displayed and controlled. So, you know, a lot of you are used to having these show axes and show gnomon buttons on here. But you'll also see if I make this a little wider, you know, before typically I, I have my ops manager about that wide. But if you extend it out, you know, we, we duplicated the gnomon's control onto the manager's panel. Because you know all all of these windows are dockable and repositionable, so a lot of people will maybe like if I'm using my dual screen setup when I'm you know deep in the weeds and programming, I'll I'll have my planes and toolpath manager on a different window or monitor screen, I should say. But when you click the show nomens pull down here, you'll see there's some additional control in here. So you know we're used to seeing WCS C plane and T plane, 
But now, you know, do I want to show my selected planes? Do I want to show that traditional display C plane and C plane in the C plane and T plane in the corners, like a lot of people will will use? Do I want to show the actual plane name on on the screen? And do I want to use what my system origin colors are? But getting into that a little bit more is, you know, I I can now have multiple planes displayed on the screen, and if I tell it to show show the plane names then I can basically go in here and click this display check mark, which is a new column in the planes manager. And then it will persistently display those planes. So, you know, if you're working in multi-axis or a rotary table or a horizontal machine, it can really make it easy to hop around to the different planes without maybe having to use view sheets. Because now you'll, you'll see if I hover over a specific plane like this front plane, now, this is a copy of front, so just be mindful that if you're using any of the default planes, like in the past, you, you can't edit the default planes. So if you want to be able to modify or edit a particular plane, you'll, you'll want to make sure you, you make a copy of that. But you'll notice if I, if I hover over it here and right-click, you know, this, this was not available in 2019. So now if I right-click on any of the displayed planes on the screen, I now get all my plane controls right there in the graphics screen. So I don't have to hop back over to the planes manager or go into the Nomen settings. And now I can edit and really do any of the typical controls that I would do based on that particular plane. You know, do I want to set my G view to, to that particular plane or really any other control I want to do to it? You know, do I want to edit it? If I want to use the new section view that, that came out in, in 2019, and the last thing I want to touch on here in the in the planes is under the gear setting here. I believe the plane nomen settings might have been under the show nomens button in 19, but you now have, you know, we added this grid control prior, but there's the color controls now. So based on the color here at the bottom of my screen, and then also, do I only want to show that plane when highlighted. So I can still display, you know, the XYZ gnome in there, but if I don't want to display that big grid, I can make sure that it's only when I highlight that particular plane. So if I hover over, you know, slide plane or my part based plane, then it will make sure to only highlight when I select it. And then you also have control over, you know, how, how big you want the axes to be. And I, I believe that was in 19 is some file merge enhancements. So any of you that use file merge, you know, the big pain there always was, my only option was to select. So I could select the position of where I wanted to merge the file into, but you know, it was never in the right location. I would always have to go back into transform or use the align command or a bunch of different things. And the other feedback that we've always gotten is, you know, say my fixture plate that I'm trying to bring in on the part I have on the screen here is on the same level as the part, and I want to be able to control that. Well, I would have to bring it in, position it, then go back and assign the correct level or a different level so I can better manage my file. So essentially what we've done is fixed all of those issues with, 2020. So if I go to file merge here, and I have this kind of set up to be a very simple example, but I think it'll give you guys a good idea. So I'm just saying file merge, you know, I, I originally saved this base out to a separate file, you know, it can be a solid part file, any any CAD file you can merge into the existing file. So now you'll see that this box is a little different. So the part the file comes in, or this fixture plate comes in and the in the location it was in the other file, but now I have all these controls here to select a line. Do I want to use dynamic, mirror, scale it? And then you also have level management here. So I want, do I want to use, you know, this is how it was in 19. I would use the merge file levels. Do I want to put it on the active level or do I want to offset it by a certain amount of level? So let's say I want to offset it by a hundred and I want to dynamically position this. So the little box is telling me, you know, what do I want to move? 
the part I brought in. And then also you guys will notice here that I have my 2D switch turned on. If I switch it to 3D, the gnomon now becomes 3D versus 2D, but I actually had this set up as a 2D dynamic position, but now I can select, I want you know this hole to line up with this hole on the actual part. So I can then click my X axis, snap to that position, and you know I can have other control here, you know, do I wanna move it or copy it? But I can really just say, okay. And then now that I've merged everything I want, I can just close out of here. And now that fixture is positioned exactly where I want without having to hop into a bunch of different commands. You know, we basically combined all those positioning commands into a single function, which anyone doing a lot of file merging like I do for demo parts or setting up customer parts, I'm going to stay on the same file level here. And one of the small enhancements I want to cover, and, you know, I'm obviously not covering it everything that's out in 2020, but one of the ones I, I thought that could be pretty useful in the model prep is first let's turn on a level here where I have some additional fixture components. And we'll use a feature that was already existing in Mastercam, but let's say we, we wanna split this face here and say, okay. So now I have this split now I've got to make sure my audience view is staying caught up with what I'm doing on the screen. But now I split this face here. And one thing I want to talk about, I forgot to mention, you know, I'm highlighting the solid and it's highlighting the solids by faces, which is my preference. For some reason in 2020, if you go to your file configuration here and you go to the screen tab, by default, auto highlight the solids by faces is turned off. So anytime you hover over an entire solid, it will highlight it. So as long as you just turn on solids by faces here, then you know wherever I hover the mouse specifically, it will highlight that particular face. So you know, obviously that's a preference, but I, I prefer it that way. And I, I would assume a lot of people would like that as well. So you're not highlighting the whole solid every time. But the new feature we added was if I go to push pull here, Basically, the new feature is here. So if I select, I don't want an edge, I want a particular face, I can now, instead of just moving features, I can copy features. So if I say copy here and then pull this up to say to the bottom of this bolt and say, okay, this is now a, if I go to my solids manager here, it's a separate new solid so you know you, you can get additional file management and control and you know if i want to fill this in i can you know shift click here and just drag it and uh it'll it'll fill that in but you know essentially you're you're getting a new solid body there and it just makes it a little easier to use the model prep commands and you know if you want to model prep something you don't have to necessarily mess with the original solid you can you know add additional solid bodies on it and yeah john asked and ryan answered it over over text which i'm not sure if he sent it to everybody or not but how do you work when it's facing the wrong way the function i i didn't show in that merge command is under here it's called we we have these layout aligned to face and aligned to planes and that's just combined to the the button called align when you're in merge there. And then you could basically pick a face of say the fixture and then the face that you wanna mate on the part and then it will mate them together. And then you can use the gnomon to determine say the angle that, that you want that, that mate to be. So one other small feature here, and I, I won't really go over it for the sake of time, but we added this add history button here so I could, click on a particular solid and you can add, you know, fill it or whole features in there to your solids history tree. So basically what that would do is, you know, right now this solid is just a body and basically it would add all the fill it and whole commands that you would traditionally see in a, you know, a wireframe based generated solid, solid model and go into this part here. So this is where, 
a lot of enhancements have been made to 2020. One of the developers over at Mastercam told me, you know, there's there's been over 100 individual chaining improvements from 2019 to 2020. And a lot of these, I think you won't even necessarily notice on your day-to-day -day work because it's just, you know, basically a, a more intuitive way to do certain things. So let's, let's take this example here. And I kind of colored this file to make it both easy for me to show you guys and um, make it easier to determine. So I have a 2D tool, 2D dynamic mill tool path already set up and programmed, you know, with the tool and step overs and everything I want. But if I wanted to dynamic mill both of these blue faces in 2019, I would have to pick the faces. I would have to chain all of the bosses as avoidance regions. And then 19, I don't really know what I would do because 19 would only allow a single chain for an air region. So one of the big improvements from a technology standpoint is there's really no limit to the number of air regions you can have. So, you know, like an example over here in this top left, you know, you would probably have to 19, if you really wanted it to walk over both these edges, you'd maybe have to use a slot mill tool path and then chain around both edges. But if I go into my geometry here, I can go into my machining regions and, you know, I'm set to from outside and I can pick by faces. And the first thing you guys are gonna notice here is this solid chaining dialog box or you know the wireframe. Both of these have been updated basically in this kind of a graphical style of a lot of the new features in, since we've gone to the 2017 interface. But if you hover over all, all these, it'll explain to you what they are. Edges have been combined into you know, I think there was linked edges and then edges in 2019. Now it's just edges and, you know, you have your faces and then you have all your branch and start and on unselect controls. So it does take, you know, a few minutes of getting used to of, you know, what the unselect icon looks like compared to what it did in 19. But let's pick the two faces I want to cut. Say, okay. Now my avoidance regions are going to be all the bosses. So like I said before, I would have to chain all those individually using edges or loops, but now I have a new option here called bosses, and I can just say bosses on a particular face, and then it automatically chains those. Now, you know, you're wondering why it might not pick up these over here. Well, since these go to the edge of that face, it's not necessarily a particular boss. So I got my bosses selected for avoidance, and then on my air regions, the other new feature we added here is called open edges. So I can say open edges and pick basically both of these faces. And you'll see there now it picked up all of those open edges that are going to be our air regions. So, you know, something that would take maybe if I preview this, you guys will see here. And there we go. Sorry, that was my mistake. I don't know. I, I must have X'd out of when I picked the faces there. But now I can regenerate it. And, you know, something that would take probably 50 clicks or so in 2019, I now have a nice 2D dynamic roughing path avoiding all of those particular features. And I think you guys, once you get into that workflow of, you know, knowing that I can just automatically select bosses and automatically select open edges, and I don't have to worry about how many open edges I have, you can really speed up 2D dynamic chaining. And that leads into, you know, the model chamfer tool path that came out recently in Mastercam. You know, before you would have to use either the edges or the linked edges, and all of those edges had to be under the same, you know, chaining group. Where now I can go into here in geometry and let's say add a chain here. And now I can just say, let's pick the open edges. You know, let's say I need to edge break this, this, and this face. You know, I don't know how long that would take in 19, but it would not be that fast. So now I got all my chamfers set up. You know, obviously I already had this tool path set up, but you know, a lot of you guys, I, I harp on this at basically every rollout or webinar I do. You know, if you're using operation libraries or dragging and dropping previously used operations from files you've done before, then you don't really ever have to fool with the parameters tab if you have things dialed in the way you want. You're only selecting geometry. So with these enhanced selection tools, 
you guys will see a lot of time savings there. So a couple other quick things I, I want to cover under chaining here. Probably my favorite one is let's say I want to contour some features here. Now, if I go to face instead of 3D, the software, one of the enhancements is it's essentially smarter on how it propagates when we do the linked edges style of chaining. So if I pick on this edge here, I can basically hit this advance. And since I'm locked to face, it's going to be a lot smarter because before it would essentially want to pick the, the red, you know, continuation arrow would pick whatever the longer entity was, where now it's going to look at what the longer entity is, but also what plane you're chaining from. So I think I tried this file in 19. And when I got to, I believe this corner, one of the corners here, it, it, it wanted to go down instead of this around, you know, the contour I'm trying to do from the plane I'm trying to cut. But let's un unselect this because another enhancement they added was if I shift click here, it will propagate until it gets to a tangent point. Now, one of the feedbacks we got is, you know, that that feature was in 2019, but you had no control over what the tangency bias was. So if I go to my auto cursor settings here and click on the gear, I now have what my tangency tolerance is. So obviously tangent is 90 degrees. So I can go all the way up to 89 degrees here, say, OK, I don't want to save this going forward. So I'll just say no. And now if I shift click on this continuing edge, it will propagate along there where maybe in the past, like these faces are split here in 19. It it would probably stop here and you would have to keep shift clicking around. So now you can hold shift and click and it'll basically get to anywhere where there's a true 90 degree where you would have a option of where you want to chain from. And then the last one I want to talk about here is, okay, I'm done say contouring this part, but I want to contour a bunch of other things in here. Everyone would always be in the habit of, okay, I would click the blue plus and start a new chain. Essentially, you've el we've eliminated, finally, having to click that blue plus. So basically, if the geometry is not directly connected to the chain you're trying to do, I can just pick and it'll start a new chain. So I can shift click here, there's a chain. I can shift click, say this profile, I got that chain. And you know, I, I think you guys get the idea, but there's no more end chain. Obviously the, the option's still there if you wanna force end it. You know, maybe you wanna do kind of two separate tool paths on the same area. I'll talk about this now, I have my browser open. What's new.mastercam.com and I'll, I'll have a link at the end of the presentation here. But everything I'm going over today has longer, more in-depth coverage of stuff I'm going into. So if I go to chaining enhancements and go to solid chaining, you know, honestly, this is a big way of how I taught myself this. We also did some internal dealer training earlier this month, but it'll talk about, you know, all these different features and what you can do. You know, there's a lot of stuff I haven't covered that we'll cover in the rollouts. And then an additional resource is the only thing you have to make sure is your account is linked to mastercam.com and it's now my.mastercam.com. Or if you just go to mastercam.com, you guys might notice they redid their website recently. But forum.mastercam.com is the forum and they have pinned a couple topics up here. So Ken Ehrman always does a really good job on the CAD enhancements. So there's a bunch of videos in there. Dave Canigliero, who's the mill product manager, has a bunch of videos going over the mill. Rich is the systems product manager, so planes and a lot of kind of the general parts of Mastercam he has videos on. Rich Taft is our tooling manager, so he has a lot of good videos. So each, each one of those threads has a lot of good, you know, long length videos going in in depth on these new features. So I certainly invite you guys to check that out that, that want to start getting getting into 2020. But let's get into 3D Blend. So Blend has always been the quote unquote old school style tool path. So it didn't have a lot of the functionality that our 
high speed tool path do you you know all of these high speed water line that we've added over the years just want to let people know if you right click in the operations manager and go to mill tool pass this is where you'll find all the old surface rough and surface finish tool pass so there are still some applications where you want to use the previous blend because in 2020 here, and I'll, I'll show some examples, the only the 2D projection of the blend is available currently in 2020. I, I don't know if the 3D projection will come out as a service pack or just in a future version here. But you'll see in the 3D blend that it's going to calculate a lot faster than the traditional style blend. It's now multi-threaded like all the high speed tool paths are. You have the ability to do the variable stock to leave and the holder checking that's in the high speed tool pass. Really all the features you guys are used to using in, you know, say the new scallop or waterline or hybrid tool pass, but in the in the blend function here. So you'll notice that on this particular face where there's not a lot of steep features, you know, the new blend is going to work perfectly on. You know, but since it's doing the 2D projection, you'll notice this, you know, essentially 90 degree wall, these steps are gonna increase. So a section like that is where currently you would you would wanna use the traditional blend tool path if that's the style that, that you wanted to use. But you know, the new equal scallop would, would do that as well. And I'll get into some examples on how we've enhanced the control on that tool path as well. And, that was really all I had on the blend. I just want to kind of let people know that if you do click blend here, it's going to be the new high speed blend, but the old blend is still under that mill tool pass surface finish blend. Just some kind of general items you're going to see from the 3D mill tool pass is we're always looking to improve the calculation times. And 2019, we did a lot on the calculation side of from just the actual tool path algorithm. For 2020, where they really focused was, you, you would always see in the multi-threading manager, it would get done calculating the tool path, and then you would see linking passes for a certain period of time. And you know, depending on how many retracts or how complex the part was, the linking might sometimes even take longer than the tool path calculation would be. So they've spent a lot of time improving that. I don't have any specific numbers on how much faster it is, but just from using 2020 and throwing examples like these on these parts, I've noticed that the linking has been, you know, essentially a snap, snap of my fingers. And the five axis curve for any of our multi-axis customers, they've, they've done a lot of speed improvements there, especially if you have a lot of direction or angle changes in the tool path, it, it flies through those now. So I, I just have a couple other examples here. You know, the, the blend has always done a good job of, you know, equidistant steps depending on the shape of the surface and the shape of the blend lines. And you'll see here, you know, the, the new blend isn't going to be great on this really steep pocket here. So I have an example of where I took the same geometry and copied it to a traditional blend. And you'll notice that it... Uh, handles that properly. But what you'll all also notice too, I, I don't have an old school blend example on this surface, but the actual code, the, the tool path is gonna be more efficient under the new blend. So you'll see like my tool path sizes here are in the you know two, 300 kilobyte size where this surface finish old school blend, you know that's almost a meg for that particular tool path. And obviously you can filter and make some setting adjustments there to control that. but from the get-go before you get into filtering the new blend is going to be more efficient scallop toolpath examples here so the big enhancement we've made to scallop is you know if if i were to tr traditionally scallop this part and back plot might show this a little easier you know it's it's going to start on the edges and basically go around and essentially pick where it wants to go you know, based on maybe area size or just scalloping in. And, you know, it, it then ends at the center of, say, this big section here. But what we've added in is what's called seed curves. So I, I added this blue line to this file just to make it easier for, for everybody to see. But this 
chain across the entire part is what's called a seed curve. So if I assign that as a seed curve to this toolpath, you'll then notice that the toolpath is going to start at the edge like it did on the other one, but it's, con it's going to continually work towards that particular seed. So I'm not necessarily getting a collapsing style, which is what everybody's used to with scallop on a particular surface. So think of it almost as, you know, in a, in a straight line example here, I know it's curved, but the part is curved. In a straight line, line example, I, I can essentially get like a water line or even like a raster type effect, but with the, you know, constant step over scallop height control that a equal scallop tool path will have. So there's a, there's a lot of benefits there of being able to control it. And I have an example after this that I'll show you guys where, you know, you can really get in, in into the weeds, so to speak, on really adding a lot of tool path control with these seed curves. Because if I go into the parameters here and I go to tool path control, I have my boundary chains, and then I also have this curves option here. So, and I had some notes and I want to make sure I, I say this correctly, but one of the new features added in here is closed versus trimmed offsets. So closed is the traditional way you're thinking of a scallop. So that's how the first example here where it's collapsing to the center of this part, it's scallop is treating it as a closed entity. So it's always going to want to collapse to that center point of a particular face. But think of trimmed offsets similar to maybe like an air region in a 2D toolpath example where as opposed to all, it always wanting to collapse, it's going to follow what you have as your curves. So just be mindful if you're using curves that you're probably going to want to use the trimmed offsets command. And in that what's new website, they have a really kind of long example with some pictures of different use cases of that. Dave Canigliero, the mill product manager, who I think is one of the best employees at Mastercam, um, is really good at, you know, figuring out how to make the mill product better and then applying use cases to that. So this um, seed, seed curve example file I have, there's, I don't know, 60 some tool paths in here, but he has about every possible example you can use for using these seed curves. You know, am I using closed? Am I using trimmed offsets? What curves am I using? There's a level here where it's hidden, but these are all the different types of wireframe that he's using to determine the motion of the scallop tool path. And he has, you know, Z, Z, Z height and angle control, trimming it to certain features. So there's, uh, you know, some, some avoidance tool paths. There's a level here with a solid ball that he's using as avoidance. But I think you guys get, get the idea of the amount of different examples and settings. And each one of these has a slightly different way to control this tool path. But I think with all these additional features they've added to equal scallop, it's a, it's a really powerful tool path. But the quick example I wanted to show off here was, let me turn off these other levels real quick. So this is what you would get if I just did an equal scallop on this entire part as drive chains. So, you know, if I wanted to contain this just to say the top face, my traditional way would probably be to use either a containment boundary or create a silhouette boundary on my wireframe tab and then apply that to the toolpath control page. And then I would get a result, something like this, where it's contained, you know, exactly to the top of the part and not walking over the edge. But what we've added to the scallop tool pass and I believe waterline is on the toolpath control page here, you now have a checkbox for include silhouette boundary. So depending on what your drive surfaces are, it will automatically generate a silhouette boundary containment based off of that drive geometry. So, you know, I have the entire part selected here, so it's just going to do it around the edge of the part. But if I only had a couple particular faces selected for the scallop tool path, it would create a silhouette boundary on there. And then I could use, you know, my standard compensate to, you know, the center of that silhouette boundary line inside outside, which is what you guys are used to using. 
And then what we added in 19 was that smoothing tolerance where I could, you know, ensure that I'm getting a nice smooth tool path right to up to the edges of that particular. So that's the silhouette boundary. So the last part I want to get into here is some um, touching on some lathe and mill turn enhancements. You know, there's a lot of other mill enhancements in here that we'll be covering in the rollouts, but we're already at 1018, so I'm a couple minutes over. So if people have to bounce out or maybe you're not a lathe guy, feel feel free. But let's get into some lathe and tooling examples. And so now some lathe enhancements. So the first thing I want to talk about is 3D tooling. So we added 3D tooling over the past couple versions of Mastercam. One of the big feedback points was if I go into my lathe tool manager, how do I know what is a 3D tool and what isn't? You know, we're all used to seeing the blue tools with the orange or yellow inserts based on the tool. Well, now, you know, you can see here, I have a couple 3D tools and I, then I have a non 3D tool in here. So it'll pop up right away with what that particular tool is. And, you know, you just get a good idea and you can, you know, if you, have, if you select on it and hover over it, it'll give a zoomed in view. So that way you can check, you know, what the orientation of the tool is or maybe what the style of the holder is just to give a easier visual representation. But just, just make sure you click on it first and then hover for about a half a second and it'll, it'll get bigger. And there's now insert and holder designers. So one of the feedback we got when we added the 3D tooling was, yeah, great. You know, we can download models of the inserts and holders from the manufacturer, but maybe you have a custom insert or an insert you had, you know, the guys grind down or customize at your shop and you want to have that specifically in Mastercam lathe. Well, now you can go, and this took me a second to find because there's no button up here. So the trick here is, is there's now three tabs down here. And if I'm in say the insert tab, I can right click and say create insert. And then that basically gets me into a specific insert designer. And then it'll, it'll highlight red, the boxes that are required to get something to appear here. So, you know, if I say this is a metric file, if I say 50 and then my thickness is 10, now I'm starting to get that insert and then I can go through customizing it and making it exactly the way I want and save it to my library. And that works for holders as well. I won't show an example of that for sake of time. But the other part of that too, the feedback we got is the people that really got into it. And I definitely stress, you know, depending on what tooling manufacturers you use, a lot of them, most of them are, are on the machining cloud now, and it's a completely free app. You can set up your machine and feeds and speeds based off of material and your machine horsepower, and you can really dial in a, a process if you, if you take the time to use that. But the people that did do that, it was harder for them to find all the different types of inserts they have. So now there's an option here under the filter. You know, you have the, the, the traditional Mastercam lathe tool filter, but there's also now an insert and holder filter that's, that's geared around all that 3D tooling and, and what the different functions of all the different inserts in, in lathe are there. So you can really fine tune what you're able to see if you start getting to have a large library. And that works on the holder side as well. When you are building in inserts and holders, and I won't talk about this, but or I, I don't have a specific example, is there's now automatic mating when you're creating the full tool assembly. So you have a holder and an insert you wanna design in the tool designer it'll automatically mate, say, this face of the, these two faces of the insert to the correct position on the holder, and you're not having to, you know, it was a bit of fooling around to get that exactly positioned the way you want. And now, you know, if you're using the dynamic gnomon to slide it into position, it'll essentially stop when the insert geometry hits the holder geometry, and then you know it's exactly positioned. So think of it as some of that technology that's in the align feature is just built in automatically to the tool assembly designer on the lathe side. And they also redid, and we talked about this with 19, but there was a button to click for automatic tool compensation after you were done building a tool and picking up those clearance points, you know, like the front and back clearance on say a lathe rough tool. And some of the times it would work, some of the times it wouldn't. So they essentially re rewrote that from the ground up. And when you say generate, compensation for a lathe 3D tool, it's it's gonna be right 
right on the money for 2020. And just to touch on that, like my example here, I, I, I have a Haas ST20. They've added quite a bit of what I call standard lathes to the mill turn light product in Mastercam. So you don't necessarily need mill turn or like a multi turret, multi spindle machine to take advantage of a lot of the mill turn functions. You basically just add what's called a machine environment. And they're, since you don't have to add the mill turn module, it's certainly less, less expensive. And then you get all the benefits of automatic turret setup and simulation, which is a big part of it, and also some additional live tool setup options where it can basically derive planes from geometry as opposed to setting up lathe planes for live tools and so forth. Like if I were to do a contour tool path here, I could just pick this face and say do it based off of that face and I never have to even get into my planes manager. It, it'll just pick it up for me. So the next part I want to talk about on lathe here and something that you guys will notice right away is different. Now this is a mill turn machine environment page, but this will look very similar for standard lathe post users is when you go to set up your chuck jaws, you'll see this screen as opposed to the screen we're used to seeing for years based off of the chuck jaw work, work holding setup in lathe. So one of the big features here is you now, in addition to just rectangular jaws, you now have pie jaw options and you have additional control here for the different steps of the jaw. And then you get this live preview of exactly what it's going to look like dimensionally specific to the adjustments you make. You know, if I make this 35, then you'll see right there that I get, you know, a live preview with my compensation point. And back in 2019, and if, people have tried this before, but before you were only allowed essentially four reference positions on the OD and three on the ID when you were doing Chuck Jaws in Mastercam. But now on the parameters tab, you have a essentially unlimited position and option of where you want to put those reference positions of where the part's going to be held. So if I say select reference point here, I can essentially now live drag on the part and have it exactly be where I want it to be on here. And I could turn on my auto cursor settings if I want to say snap to a midpoint of a line, but by default, it's going to be just kind of a live pickup and it'll still snap to the edges. But if I want to control other locations, I would modify my auto cursor settings. So I just want to make people aware that when you first go into your lathe jaw setup in 2020, it's definitely going to look a little different. And you know, like anything in here, just you can hover over the features to see what what you want the particular setting to be. Do I want to add and remove steps and so forth? Which gets more into the mill turn part of this is that we can save Chuck Jaws to a what's called a component library, which is technically a .gmd file in Mastercam. So anyone that knows or has used mill turn or has mill turn when you went through the job setup, you would have to define the jaws every time. But you can see now with this screen having, you know, my default eight inch chuck, I can go in here and say, select new chuck jaws. And then I essentially have a list from this GMD file of all the different jaws. So if I, you know, custom define these, I can save them out as a different one, you know, say soft jaws for job number one, two, three, whatever, and save those off. So the next time that that comes up or a similar part, I don't have to re, design or tell Mastercam what the work holding is going to be. I can just pull it from my component library. If you wanted to save those back, you would basically have to contact us and, you know, Mitch or Chad would have to add that to your machine file because the next part of this is if I go, you know, the, the code expert opens up, if I have any of these mill turn light machines or a mill turn machine before this was all grayed out over here, but now the full component library is, open to the users. And Mastercam is gonna have some materials on this as basically a walkthrough on how to set it up. They had kind of a test version for our internal training earlier this, this month, just to make sure that the documentation was written properly. But basically walking through this with what people were used to contacting us to add this stuff to their component library files. So 
before this was locked down down to the reseller and I would have you know my upper turret and this is all my particular tool station holders that were assigned to this machine already. But what I can do is say open component file and let me navigate to my shared directory where this file is located and I can go to Milturn machines, this ST20Y. And now this is, it's technically a Nakamura, but it's an Eppinger file. <clears throat> and like I talked about on the Mastercam forum, another part of linking your account is there's what's called the tech exchange on there. And a lot of these libraries are, have already been set up and uploaded by Mastercam from the tooling manufacturer. So I know Eppinger's on there, Iskar's on there. There's a handful of other ones where it's basically a large file of all the different tool holders. And you can see here, I mean, there's 300 in here of different style station holders that are already pre-set up. And you basically pick pick the one you want. You know, it, it, it has the, the manufacturer's part number, and then you just drag it over to your upper turret. And it's not necessarily assigning it to the turret. It's just making it then available for you to set up and assign tools to it and set it up from, from there. So, you know, stuff that basically wasn't open to the user before we've, we've since added in there. And then you would see that in, this is a separate file, because a, a GMD file, this is for anyone that's not familiar, it's essentially a Mastercam file and it just has all the geometry. You know, I, I think the technical name of it is like, geometry machine definition or something to that effect and you can essentially have a solid model it, it doesn't have to be an stl i can switch it from stl to solid and then assign that as a feasible work holding so if you want to download a one-off or you designed a one-off tool station holder you could then save that as a dot gmd and then assign it to your machine environment tab so like i said the what's new dot mastercam.com and forum dot mastercam.com is where you can find all those other videos I was I was talking about and I appreciate everybody for your time hope this got you some good tips to use when you start getting into 2020 and stay tuned for our in-person rollouts we'll be doing a similar format to last year we'll we'll be doing one in basically a central location in each one of our states so Illinois Wisconsin Iowa and Indiana